and detailed system become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. Uh, she changed careers from banking to pursue a security trading career in 2008. Self-taught uh, day trader with over 10 years experience. Melissa's specialty is, is a trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears uh, frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and the Fox Business Network. Uh, Melissa, I bet after uh, this year's mortgage bus uh, market, you're glad you got out of the business. <laughs> well, you know what people are telling people, hurry, get in, lock in your rate, the rates are going up. I'm sure that's what the mortgage people said to people all year. <laughs> yeah, when you walk across the Golden Gate Bridge, you come to the spot where everybody jumps off. And there's a line of mortgage brokers waiting for their turn. Oh God, I hope they I hope you're not that's not true. <laughs> no, it's not true. I just made that up. Uh, but why why let the truth get in us in the way of a good story? Well, thanks so much for having me. It's a chilly day here in New York City. We're supposed to get snow flurries, if you can even believe it. Uh you know, it's um pretty miserable here too in Silicon Valley. We're getting a rare rain day and they're getting hammered up in the Sierras with snow. So you have until five minutes before the hour. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself Thank and you. you have the floor. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. So I'm going to look here at the chat. So if anybody has any questions, I will see them here on the side. And uh, right now you can see the slide here. We're going to talk about shorting. We're going to talk about trading for a living. We're going to talk about trading the side of institutional money. And as John was saying, it's been a very interesting day for the market, really ever since 1114. So it was pretty much the week before Thanksgiving. The market's been in a very tight range since it gapped up. On 1114 we really haven't gone anywhere and actually we may not go anywhere for the next week because the fed meets on the 13th one week from today and then they're going to announce what they're going to do or the anticipation of an interest rate hike or lowering rates or keeping rates the same or what they're going to do for 2024 even though the fed has not said they're going to lower rates in 2024 the market in the last month and the month of november has thought that indeed they would so we had a rally in november and now we've been holding that rally even though we fell off today we actually started today with a gap up so it's been a choppy market in the last month unless you're looking for selective picks so we're going to talk today about how to find the right pick and we're also going to talk about shorting because i like to short see a couple of familiar faces there you can just chat in the room and again for those of you that don't know me i appear on tv We've, of course, been talking about the economy all year and mostly the Fed and interest rate hikes. And again, 2024 is an election year, so it'd be a really interesting year to see what happens with the overall market. Again, my name is Melissa Armo, and if you want to contact me after today's webinar, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me. I do answer the phone or I return phone calls at 929 gap You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So we're into the end of 2023, and I'm a very goal-oriented person. It's good to take stock of this year and be honest with yourself. You can tell me in the room. You can, you know, you don't have to tell anyone if you're embarrassed, but it's really important to look at your year. How was your year, 2023 trading, if in fact you traded this year? Did you have a good year? Did you have a bad year? Did you have a so-so uh, year? Are you up for the year or are you down for the year? This is the time of the year to start looking at that. Again, there's no reason to wait for January to start to have New Year's resolutions and to set the tone for the next year. You should be starting to think right now about your goals for 2024. And if you didn't have a good year this year trading, you have to think, how can you turn it around? And you really shouldn't be waiting to turn it around. Now is the time to really evaluate and be honest with yourself. Where are you for the year? And did you accomplish your financial goals for this year? Or could, that, could you have had a better year than you did? I have the stats in here for our year. I run a live trading room every single day. It opens at 9 a.m. in the morning. We trade between 9.30, 10 a.m., 10.15 in the morning. These are all the stats for this year. Every single thing we traded all year. 
So far to date, 536,460 with an average risk on every trade of about three grand. So these are trades on margin. Most of these trades are shorts. We are gonna talk about some of these trades today. We had a really nice trade actually on Monday. It was the biggest trade of the week, which was Meta. Meta had a gap down and fell. That was a great trade. I also trade options. We will discuss a few options. We're having a big year for options as well. Again, I will do calls and I will do puts. Um, so this year, again, we did do shorts in the market, as hard as it may believe. We're going to talk about some puts we did in the market. Despite the fact the market was in an uptrend, yes, I shorted the market this year. I did options in the market. I did puts. And I made money in those puts, okay? So right now, I'm not in anything um, in the queues or the spy because I want to see what happens in the next week. But I have no problem, um, you know, doing something in either direction. But I do prefer to short. So we're up over $2 million a year for the options newsletter. That is a separate subscription. I don't run a live options room. Those trades get emailed to you in live time. But it's a very good time to think about where you want to be for 2024, focus on 2024, and prepare to have a better year next year, no matter what, okay? So again, this was a transition year for me because I was still unpacking. I moved a little more than a year ago, and I spent the first part of my 2023 year unpacking, getting situated in my new neighborhood, and ordered new furniture, got all that set up. So I'm finally ready to go into 2024 in my new home with everything everything perfect and to really just focus on my goals for 2024 so if, if you're someone again that doesn't like to think about things if, if your the year didn't turn out the way you want you're not going to do yourself any favors by just by doing that okay face the truth of where you're at with your trading and say i know i can do better i'm gonna have a better year and then you have to do the things that that will make it happen for yourself because it's the american dream to become rich successful and financially independent and again when i say rich what that what that word means is different to everyone if i said how much money would it take for you to feel rich whatever you would put in the box would be different than what i would say as well and everybody has a different mindset about that but it's the idea that you are living the dream where you're not worried about money or even worried about going into a recession or worried about high interest rates like we were talking about, where you're actually financially independent and you are working for yourself, which is pretty much what day trading is. But you need a foundation to day trade. You need a foundation, you need a strategy, and you need a foundation to train, all right? You need an infrastructure for every entry and that's the strategy. The strategy is the core reason behind why you're even watching the stock in the first place, whatever stock you're doing. Again, I was talking about Meta, which we shorted on Monday, but there's got to be a reason you're doing it or that you want to do it, okay? There has to be a foundation supporting it. And for me, the foundation is gaps. But trading is a real job if you take it seriously. If you don't take it seriously, then you're going to have a hard time being successful and you'll have some wins, some losses. And overall, at the end of the year, you're going to be down because if you look at trading as something where you're gambling, where there's a 50-50 crapshoot of every trade you take could win or lose those are not good odds so every trade i take i'm trying to put the odds in my favor that i'm going to have a winning trade so that's how i develop my whole thought process and system and again i've been training since 2008 so going on 16 years it's really hard to believe time just seems to fly but in the past when i was doing mortgages i wanted to find a new career and it took me several years to figure out the strategy i do now but i perfected it and I've been doing it for such a long time and nothing else now that I'm successful at it. So I use one strategy daily to stay consistent. My strategy is based on gaps. I get up in the morning and I rate every gap that I trade or look at trading to determine if I want to trade it. And then I try to narrow it down to the best pick. This checklist is my reigning system. I go through every single solitary day. And again, that's how I chose the ch trade that we did on Monday, which was meta. What are we going to do tomorrow? I don't know. Again, we have data out in the market Thursday. We have data out in the market on Friday. We have the unemployment rate that comes out Friday. But I'm not sure if the market's really going to react to any of these things in a gap up or a gap down that's going to have any traction until next week. The market is teetering, teetering on a tightrope, waiting for what's going to happen with interest rates. And it's been very difficult for people who are long-term traders or swing traders right now to make decisions on what to do. Because again, if you went long the market at the beginning of 2023, you actually are up for the year. I'm talking about when I say the market, I mean the SPY or the QQQs. Individual stocks, things have varied, okay? Some stocks have had good years. Some stocks have had down a down year this year, despite the market. So I might do a different trade every day. 
I don't know what I'm going to do till I get up in the morning and I see what is in fact gapping. So let's talk about what is a gap. We did this this week. We did a put in Netflix. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. It's 3.09 Eastern time. The market closes at 4 o'clock. Tomorrow morning on Thursday, the market opens at 9.30. Again, I live in New York. Eastern time zone is where the market opens at 9.30 and then closes at 4 every single day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. In between times, there's trading that goes off. There's post-market trading and pre-market trading. And again, what happens is stocks can move. The market can move during that time frame. So what happened here with the Netflix, and again, I'm just going to go back. And I'm going back to, this is the end of November. Netflix closed here at 4 o'clock, gap down. Closed here, gap down, fell. Closed here, gap down, fell. This was Monday. So the whole market, actually, on Monday, which was December 4th, the day we did the meta, uh, fell. Okay? And then we've been pretty much sideways ever since. But this is a gap, just to show you. Okay? In this case here, this is a bearish gap. Again, I prefer to short. Now, you can do bullish gaps. You can do bearish gaps. Uh, we have done some bullish gaps recently, too. We did crowd. You can look at that. It was a really nice long move. It was a bullish move. We bought calls and crowd, and we also went long as a day trade, CRWD. But anyways, what is a gap? A stock gap to the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So how do you find gaps? Anywhere. There's millions of things that gap. It's the whole idea of finding a gap that's a good one or what I call a golden gap or what is basically predictable, okay? So you can't short every gap down. You can't go long every gap down. You can't short every gap up. You can't go long every gap up. So I'm looking for something that I can qualify to determine the direction and that also will have a big move. So here's the meta. Actually, this was, this was the one um, that we did on... Monday. So this was news. Actually, this was not an earnings gap. It was a news gap. So this was Friday the 1st, December. Meta closed here. Gap down. Fell. Boom. So we shorted it. We got in got out. So again, this is a gap. So this was Friday. We closed here. Snug as a bug around 325 and change into 4 o'clock. Gap down in the morning here under 320. So around 319, 318 and change or something. It fell. Dropped. Boom. So this was profit, again, if you shorted it. That was on Monday. So here's the trade that we did. This is a one-minute chart in Meta. Again, I run a live trading room. I call the trades live in the room. You can do them with me. Stock close here, gap down, dropped. We shorted it, got the drop, rallied, and got the drop and got out. And that's it. We were done. One of the things that I've also perfected in doing this for as long as I've been doing it is I like to do fast trades. Again, it, it's, it's just so much easier, particularly in a market like this. If you can make money early in the morning and be done in 5, 10, 15 minutes, a half an hour. If you're waiting all day for something to move or you need the market for the move and then the market flatlines or doesn't go anywhere or fakes out the direction, you're losing in trades, even in the last month, okay? So the best case scenario is always to get out of, in and out of trades fast. And one of the reasons that I prefer to short is because short moves happen fast. So I like to trade fast and be done. And the whole point, again, of shorting is that panic comes in very, very quickly. Okay. So one of the reasons that I prefer to short is that moves to the downside happen a heck of a lot faster than they do to the upside. There's no emergency if someone says, well, do you want to go long Apple? Again, you could have gone long Apple this week. I did not do it. But Apple did have a move. I think it was yesterday. There's no emergency if you want to go long. You can think about it, think about it, think about it. There's an emergency or a panic that happens very often in stocks when they're falling or the market. Because again, there are, there are gaps that happen in ETFs, like uh, gold has been rallying. Um, so that's another one. You could look at the gold ETFs. So again, you can look at ETFs that are gapping. You can look at stock symbols that are gapping. Lots of things gap. And again, I'm looking to get in and out very, very quickly. So here was the trade that we did in Meta. Again, this was a day trade. This is a trade where you would have needed a margin account to do the trade. Now, you could have bought a put and you could have got out of the put quick. But this was the day trade. We entered at 315.75. 2,000 shares was a risk of 3,700. We added to the trade 
Okay, this is an advanced concept, but I called the out in the room. At 315.99, total shares was 4,000. Average price here was 315.87. And again, got the drop. Again, I'm looking for momentum, a dollar, two dollars more. So again, this is a two dollar plus move. Again, this is happening in minutes, seconds. And you could have made $8,680. So again, that's getting in, getting the rally, and get the drop out. Done. Boom. Done by 10 o'clock. And again, I called this in the room. So if you are day trading right now and you don't know how to capture these moves and you're waiting till after 10 o'clock to try to find moves, again, you're, then you're pretty much waiting on the market. And what if the market doesn't situate itself by 10 o'clock? What if the market reverses? You know, and that's what a lot of people are seeing. People get up in the morning like today and they say, well, the market's up, it's really strong, that the market falls all day. And then yesterday, market was down, they say, oh, the market's weak, and then it rallies, and then it fell into the close. I mean, this is the, where we've been sideways, the sideways action for weeks, where you could get chopped up to bits and pieces, okay? You don't want to do that. It's extremely important to be very specific about what you do, very specific about the pick, and it's not just the pick, it's the entry. So how did I know Meta would fall? Again, we're talking about Monday. I rated the gap, and Meta, again, gap down. I use a 26-point checklist that tells me what to trade and what to look for each day. I'm looking for qualifying factors in the daily chart in order to determine if I want to take that trade. And again, I go to the short side first, but when I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This is what gives me an edge. Obviously, then it doesn't matter if you have 2,000 shares or 200 shares or 5,000 shares or 100 shares of something. If you get momentum, if you get a big move, you get a dollar or two dollars or more, that's what you want. And again, the quicker, the better. And I have an edge because I trade on the one minute chart. But momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Learning how to take a position in a stock in anticipation that the stock will have an explosive move is extremely important because again, many people are scalping, particularly in a choppy market like this. And then it's hard to cover your losses. If you're scalping, you never have any big winners. And then obviously it's very difficult to even trade options because you've got to get the momentum in your few doing options because you have a time factor in reference to doing options. But these enormous moves, again, the momentum moves that I'm looking for in the gap, they can happen very fast. And momentum trading is a very profitable way to trade. And it is how you can make a lot of money in the market, whether you have a small account or whether you have a medium account or whether you have a big account or whether you're doing options or whether you're doing day trades. And the type of account you have and the way you use it Again, to take the position really depends on how much money you have. Because in order to take a, a margin trade, you can you have to go to a retail broker. You need twenty five thousand to get four to one margin, or you have to go prop, and you can open up prop accounts with as little as twenty five hundred and get ten to one margin. And there's prop accounts out there, but you have to determine how you want to do the trade. Whereas if you want to do an option, you can open up an options account and buy a put with a cash account, and you can open up an options account with $2,000. Any questions here so far? I don't want to talk too fast. Everybody with me? So far? Hello. OK. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. And understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's how you will know when the power of money will flow to pay you, okay? So again, I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for the footprints of institutional money in a stock in order to take a position in it. How am I figuring that out? I'm using my Golden Gap 26 point rating system and I figure all this out before the open. Now you can do it at night. Why? Because things gap at night. There are some things that are gonna gap tonight that we have earnings out from tonight. I usually wait till the morning. And again, that's when the market usually gaps. So I look at the market every day too. But you only need one good trade a day in order to make money. But again, I want to be with that institutional money, big money in the market. Uh, I want to be with the hedge funds. I want to be with the large position players. So everything we're doing is has volume. Um, every option that we do, every day trade that we take, everything, because again, we're looking for institutional money. 
And the market has not made new highs yet this year. Okay, so will it next week after, after the Fed uh, meeting? Maybe. I don't know. We're not that far away from the highs. But it's very, 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 very obvious in the last month. And again, next Wednesday will be one month since that gap up on 1114. If we really don't go anywhere on the data Thursday or Friday, which again, we have the unemployment number Friday, if we really don't go anywhere on that data, which we might, we might or we might wait till Wednesday. If we don't, that'll be a month of sideways basing where no more institutional money is buying the market because I want to wait and see what the Fed's going to say. So again, this is a really important week for the market. So important. And there's going to be a lot of opportunity to trade and make money in the next week. How am I going to trade it? I don't know. I don't know until I see the gap. Okay. And I just got done telling you, I'm not in, in any QQQ or spy trades. I was in some over the weekend. I was down in them Friday and they flipped on me on Monday. My bias was we were drop. I was right. And I got out of those with profit on Monday. And now we've, we've just been waiting this out this week, but the market doesn't seem to want to budge. And so that tells you that the big players aren't going long anymore right now. They're waiting. It's a standstill. That's what we're that's why we're seeing this basing out, basing out. And and again, how do you play that? You can't. It's just it's just it's like a nothing burger. Um, how do you tell if it's a good gap or a fake gap? I rate it. I rate it. I rate it using my 26 point rating system. That's the system you come and learn in my two day class. Now, I don't know what you mean by fake gap, meaning I just mean, I, I didn't say fake gap. I just meant a gap that isn't going to go anywhere, if that's what you mean. But that was a good question. Now, again, how can you, do, can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes, you can learn from me from the nuts and bolts from everything in my class. Sometimes if people are new, then they learn and they don't have any bad habits. Actually, they do very well. Sometimes people kind of be them in training for longer than I'm alive. And then they have a lot of bad habits and they have to get away from those bad habits. So... You know, again, it's something where the opportunity exists for you no matter where you're at in your educational level to learn something new. Whether you've been training for a long time, you don't know what I know about gaps, and that's what you're going to come and learn from me, or you know nothing about trading at all, and you may have a learning curve, and then you go through it. Then you go through it. Then you start small. Again, if $2,000 is what you have, and you can open up an options account and trade with it, you're not going to risk $2,000 in one trade. You're not going to risk, you know, $500. you are going to risk 100 200 start slow you're going to take that two thousand dollar account and build it to four you're going to take four and build it to eight and so on and so forth everyone that's a billionaire and everyone that's a millionaire unless they were born into money started took whatever money they made built their own businesses built their own wealth and took it from there this is common sense for some reason and i just i don't know why it's the gambling nature of trading or whatever you want to call where, where people just get sucked into doing things that they really shouldn't be doing and going hog wild and piggy with their risk and trades. And then, of course, they dig themselves a hole, okay? A trading is not a get-rich-quick type of thing. It is something that is the American dream to be rich and financially successful. Yes, you can do it, but this means hard work. It means time. It means money. It means an investment in your account, not only in a class like mine, but the time investment it takes to learn it. And I'm not meaning, I don't mean forever, I mean, whatever it is, if it's weeks, if it's weeks, if it's months, if it's months, if it's a couple of years, at least you're better off in one year from now than you are right now. If you lost money this year trading and you could know that 12 months from now, you could be up for the year in 2024 and have a fabulous month, whatever that amount of money would be, even if it's 50 grand, if you make net, you know, next year, say you make 50 grand, you're, you're trading part time, you have a job on the side, that's an extra 50 grand that you don't have right now that you could have in 12 months. So again, if you are realistic and thoughtful about your goals, still having wonderful, fabulous goals, but be realistic how to get there, you're gonna be you're gonna just do, you're gonna be do so much better. Because I think it's the unrealisticness of people where they think that they're gonna, you know, get free ideas and that are gonna make them rich, you know, coming to free lectures like today. You're not gonna learn how to get rich in anything today. You're gonna learn in a class where you study and you focus on what you do it, and it takes hours, but it doesn't have to take forever. And it's a good investment of your time. When I, when I started trading, I, I thought it was gonna take me six months. I said, I'm really smart, I can do this in six months. And then it took me three years. So, I mean, you don't, you don't need to take three years. You can learn my system in a weekend. Now you're gonna go start making money right away as well. If you're copycatting my trades in the room, you could. 
but you're still going to have a learning curve. And I don't know what that is because I don't know you. And then I get to know people and you come back and you answer questions, you ask me questions and I answer them for you and so on and so forth. So again, that's the point of the support of the trading room is that I'm there every day where you can ask me questions, but you are still placing the trades. You are still have to be thoughtful about your risk. And again, you can't have piggy targets and things because it's going to come back to bite you in the butt, especially in a market like this, which has been basing out for the last several weeks. Now, we all, we did do Tesla. This is this was in November. This was before the Tesla truck thing and everything else. We had a nice put in this, but I haven't touched this since then. Uh, we bought Tesla puts. So this is the newsletter. It comes to your email inbox. We did this in 1116. This was in the afternoon. Uh, it's rare I send a trade in the afternoon, but I did. We bought the 230 Tesla puts that expired on the 24th. This is the following week out. Um, this was the week of Thanksgiving. That cost $4. Now, if you had a, a smaller account and you bought three and risk 1200 you could have made $900. That's a good trade, in and out. So let's look at the 16th here. Let's look at the Tesla chart. The 16th was here. Take it up. See the gap. Stock closed here, gap down. Take it over. Again, we did the 230. So it dropped into it. It dropped into it, down, boom, got out. Again, I'm, we're, this isn't long-term trading where we're buying it and, or shorting it and holding it forever. This isn't swing trading. We're chunking it out. We're making money. We're taking it, getting in, get it out. We're taking the getting momentum, get out. Again, whether we get long or whether we go short. So again, this is not swing trading. We have to wait, okay? This is active income, making it proactive, get in the trade, get the move, get out. And that's, again, why... The idea of risking $300, $400, $500 or having a small account, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you made an average of $500 a day, that's $2,500 a week. What's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. Again, it's a lot of people, I think, especially with, the, with all the things that are going on with some of these stocks that have had the booms in the last couple of years, like with the Reddit chat rooms and GME, where, where people have become millionaires just by trading one stock. That, that is not the norm. That was an anomaly, okay? You can build wealth and get good at doing this. You take the amount of money that you have and you make it work for you by turning it over and over and over and over and over again. And we're looking for one to one. So if I risk $500, I'm looking to make $500. If I risk $3,000, I'm looking to make $3,000. 50% is even good in a market like this in December where we're still waiting for the market to do something. But you must have an edge to be successful. And mine is spotting momentum before the move occurs. Because again, after the fact, it's too late. It's too late, and you can't chase it. Now, we also have been doing BABA. BABA has been a slow bleed down. So we shorted this as a day trade. We, we did a couple puts in this, too. So this was a day trade, 11.29. We shorted it on margin. Again, I called it in the room, 74.80. Dropped. We only made 30 cents in this. It was a quick in and out one, but it was money. There wasn't much to do that day. It was 11.29. Right in here, stock close here, gap down, open, rallied. We got in, got out, done, boom. But it was money. And again, sometimes you just take what you can get, especially around the holidays. Now we did do the 77 puts. We did the 75 puts. We've done a bunch of puts in this. They've all worked. They've all worked. You could still be in them. Uh, so this has been a slow bleeder in the BABA. Here was the day trade. Stock closed here, gap down. This was 11.29, rallied. And again, got in, got the drop. And again, this is the momentum. This is the move you could have gotten out here. So that was back at the end. That was last week. Actually, I guess, I think that was a week ago. It was Wednesday. So again, shorting is fast. Institutional money equals big money in stocks, big money in the market. That's how it moves things. This was a recent trade that we did. This was one of the biggest trades we had this week. I'm out of this trade. We're going to go over it. I called it last Thursday. 11.02 in the afternoon, I sent this trade out. If you're on the options newsletter, we did a put in Google. It was the 134 strike that expired this Friday. But you should not be still in this. I don't know why you would be. And again, it was a put. So let's look at it. So that was 11.29. So here we go, boom and boom, doom. So remember I was talking about Monday. So again, you see what this did from Friday to Monday. This is the Google. Take it over. You see how this broke 130. 
on the fourth. So that was a nice trade, a nice trade, and that was a short, okay? So again, a put is a short. A put is a more economical way to actually take a trade. So the cost was $1.50, which was cheap, considering this is over $130 stock. Number of contracts, I'm going to give you the advanced trader risk and beginner risk. If you risk $9,000, you could have doubled your money and made $18,000. And this was an exit on Monday. I don't know where Google is actually trading today. A beginner risk, if you'd risked $1,200, you could have made $2,400. And again, this is a great example where you could take an account like five grand, say you have an options account, or 10 grand if you have an options account, you certainly could risk $1,200 in one trade if you have 10 grand in an options account and then you could have made $2,400. So you could have made basically almost 25% of your account in one trade. You would have had to hold it for like two days and through the weekend. But this was a nice call. This was one of the biggest trades this week. It was a 200% return investment. And again, it's just, you just let it go. You ride it out, okay? Could have gone the day I called it, could have gone the next day. You you just let it play out. That's how momentum is. The you, momentum just goes. You can't force it. Just like you can't force something. If something's down, you can't force it to go. And just like if something's up, you can't force it to go any more than it's going to go. But you have to make money on a regular basis if you want to trade for a career. You need more winners than losers. And so I'm following the moves that institutional money makes in the market. Then I'm capturing those moves in a small time frame in a small period of time daily. And again, I've been teaching people for long enough now as well. I've been trading for a while, but I started the business in 2012, so I've had the business now for 11 years. You know, you, you, a lot of people trade, and they think they know whatever. They think they know ABC. They think they know how to go long. They think they know how to short. They think they can buy every dip. They think they know whatever they know. They think it's right, and they think they know whatever they know. The fact is you don't know what you don't know because you don't know it. <laughs> so it's like what I found in teaching people in all the years I've been is you don't know what you don't know and you won't until you do. So it's, you know, this is one of these things to try to describe to people. You're not gonna know the information that I know unless you sign up for my class. You may think that you take a good trade and yet the, then the trade loses nine times out of 10. One time it wins, nine times it loses or 50-50, whatever. You're like, well, I've done this before and it's worked. Yeah, sometimes anything works. Sometimes crappy trades works, okay? That's not the consistency that you need. In order to have these kind of stats that I showed you at the beginning of the year where we're at for the year, you've got to be consistent. You've got to make more money than you lose. You have to have more winners and losers. And you may think you're doing things at work, but they don't because you're not consistently winning. At the beginning, I asked, assess your year. Look at where you're at for the year and be honest with yourself. And then you can move forward and make changes and do better in 2024 because you should want to do better. Otherwise, what's the point of doing this? While trading is fun, losing is not. Making money is more fun than anything. It's not fun to lose. It's fun to win. It's fun to be successful. And then you have money to do things and do other things with your life. And again, the nice thing about trading is that the time that it takes you to do it is just not that long. I mean, even if you sat all day, which I don't, six and a half hours is the only hours the market is open. And we usually only focus on the morning. But does everyone get the point I'm trying to make? You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And that's just like, you know, when your eyes wide are wide open, then you realize, oh, yes, now I see it. Now I understand kind of thing. But anyways, getting into this, speaking about institutional money, let's talk about shorting. What are the benefits? What are the benefits of shorting? It's fear. It's panic. What do you think is going to happen? And I'm not saying this is going to happen. I'm saying it could happen. What do you think is going to happen if Powell next week, a week from today, right around this time on Wednesday, says that, in fact, they're going to raise rates in December? No one, no one on TV that I'm on with, no one on TV that even on, even with people I'm not on with, no one on TV is saying that that's even a possibility. In fact, the market hasn't priced that in at all. If he raises rates in December, and says, we need, still need to bring inflation down, we're gonna raise rates, the market's gonna sell off like a hot cake. <laughs> I mean, the market's gonna panic, we panic city USA, because no one thinks that he's going to do that. 
I don't know why no one thinks that. He didn't say he wasn't going to do that. At no point in time has he even discussed lowering rates in 2024, which is exactly why the market rallied on November. Everyone said that he's going to lower rates in the spring. He never said that. If you listen to the exact things that Powell said, he hasn't said that. And in fact, I read an article the other day, I forget what it was, Bloomberg or CNBC, where someone said that Powell's lost, lost control of everything because people are just making stuff up and saying it and taking positions based on nothing that he's saying, which could come back to bite them because he could raise rates in one week. I don't know if he's going to. I don't know what he's going to say. I'm flat waiting. But I'm telling you, it will create panic that will sell off the market, and then you would want to short. And again, this is the other benefit of knowing how to short and knowing how to short well, because you don't want to short everything. And you don't want to short all the time. You need to find the right things to short, just like you got to find the right things to go long. You don't want to go long everything either, even when the market's in an uptrend, even when the market's rallying. So anyways, institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and then sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. So if a stock is moving up, the side of power is with you. You want to be long, vice versa. You want to be on the side of the power in order for you to make money trading because that's how you're going to make money. If you're against it, you're going to lose. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And even if there's a temporary, what seems like a temporary change, it, you're going to end up losing anyways because it's temporary. So you have to become a specialist in defining institutional money. This is a chart of Walmart. We did a bunch of trades in this. This has been a nice short. So you could have done puts in this. You could have done day trades in this. We did both. This was back in the middle of November. Back in here was the 16th. So Walmart closed here, gap down, open, fell. So again, this was a day trade short. You could have bought a put, and it was a nice move to the downside. Again, volumes down here, the red bar depicts the selling. So what happened here? Institutional money sold off the Walmart. In fact, they've been selling off the Walmart. I clipped this for today. This is today. I don't know where this is closing. It doesn't matter. Today, the Walmart will close red. Okay. So again, institutional money has been selling off Walmart. And if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction. Then you get out after the move happens and then you profit. And again, we're doing quick moves. And even the options I'm doing are weekly options, so that's fast to me. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power and you need to know how to find it. It's very important to find it because this power has the ability to pay you. It's not hard then to make money. Like if you short a Walmart, you just ride it out. Like on Monday, you short Meta, ride it. Drops two, three dollars, boom, out. The market has the ability to pay you. You just gotta know what to do. And again, going back to what I was saying, you may think you know what to do, but you don't if you're losing. And you don't know what you don't know until you know it. So knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to become a successful trader. And you can win big trading on the side of power. And again, how do I do this in gaps? Now, this was a put we did, it was a month ago. We, we shorted the SPY. We shorted it in October. It was October 25th. We'll look at the chart in a minute. It was a SPY. It was a little pricey. 470, sold it at 950, 102%. It was a good trade. If you took three contracts, again, you could take one, pay $470. You could have sold at 950. Again, the nice thing about doing options is you don't need a margin account. And if you had done three, you would have made $1,440. So let's look at this. October 25th, the 420s. Oh, this was the end of October. Market closed here, gap down, dropped. Boom, boom, boom. So again, see where we are. I called it above the strike, got the drop, boom, boom. Again, this is the sell off, this is the momentum. You see what it's happening. It feels like a long time ago now, doesn't it, though, since November's uh, gap. Here was the gap I keep talking about. Again, this is the SPY. I could have the SPY up. I could have the Qs up. I can have either one up. Market closed here, gapped up. And what was all the hype at this point that basically everyone was saying? It was almost like like they had just lowered rates. That it was a ridiculous gap in the market. And actually, it made no sense, to be honest with you. But everyone believes that in fact they are gonna lower rates now in the early part of 2024. I don't think that, but a lot of commentators and analysts do. So we'll see. But we did a nice short here in the market in October. October was a great month. September was a good month. We captured those moves to the downside in the market. 
when it, it was selling. So again, golden gaps have huge opportunity because they spot the power of money. That's how you're going to have a big move. Because there's only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock. It's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money, or what I call power money. It's like the difference between a, a bulldozer and a little bitty car. Okay, power money is in charge. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. And you can see the lack of commitment right now, actually, in the market. There's who's in charge. You're trying to figure it out. You're like, one day you're like, oh, the bulls are in charge. Then you're like, no, today the bears are in charge. And you're like, no, I don't know. The market's flat right now, range bound. And again, tough to trade if you're looking to get it. But the reality is something should be very obvious when there is someone in charge. And trends are set and moved by the power of money people, which was a lot of in the market. Again, there's there's many, many, many different funds in the market. I'm saying, you know, hedge funds. There's small ones. There's big ones, just like there's small and big traders, just like there's small and big retail traders. Oh, we did we did the 80 Babas too. We've done so many puts in this. Look, I forgot we even did this one. This was November 16th. We've been doing this for a while. We did the 80 Babbit puts. It cost two dollars. It's just so cheap. And again, BABA is something that trades in another market. You just do it, and you just ride it, boom, and you capture the move overnight. So sometimes I'll hold an option overnight. Sometimes I'll get out the same day. It's really how big of a move it happens on that particular day and whether or not I think we have the market with us. So let's take a look at it. November 16th, 80, BABA. Oh, that was here. Stock close here, gap down. Right there it is. Boom. So again... You can hold options overnight with a limited risk. In this case here, if you took five, your risk was what, $1,000. Even if the trade had gone bust, it didn't, it worked. It gapped down the next day, you were profitable as soon as you woke up in the morning. But if it hadn't worked, you would have lost $1,000, that's it. So it's a fixed risk, it's a lot different than a swing trade. But as soon as you get up in the morning, on the second day, it was at 77, it was $3 in the money. And again, that's the nice thing about options if you hold them overnight, but it's all about chunking them out. You take it, chunk it, get the move, get out. Take it, get the move, get out. Whether I'm doing a day trade, whether I'm doing an option, any trade that I take, I'm looking to trade the momentum. Again, I prefer to short because short moves happen fast, but I will go long. Like I said, we went long crowd. We did calls in crowd. We did a day trading crowd. You could have day traded crowd today, actually. Crowd gapped up today, made another move. The system I use to find the right gap each day, though, is the Golden Gap 26-point checklist. This is the system that I created over three years of my life. This is what you'd come and learn from me if you want to take my class. There's only one more class this year, 2023. Again, the year is almost over. I the last class of the year is December 16th and 17th. This year, I just feel like, for me personally, has just flown by. And, you know, 2024, who knows, you know? This year was bullish in the market, though. You cannot deny it. And no matter what happens next week, even if we sell off, the market will close with a gain on the year. But you, if you want to trade, can trade in any market. Bullish, bearish, you can short and go long. I prefer to short, but either way, we will do bullish gaps. But you just got to find the right pick every day. And this is where some people, like I said, they miss the mark. They don't know what to focus on. Or they need the market, and then they don't get it. So if you want to make money in the market, you need to think and act like a true professional. This is true even if you're only trading part-time. But if you want to do this full-time where you, this is your only source of income, you must be consistently profitable. And if what you're doing for 2023 is not working, then what you're doing has to change. Or you will go into 2024 having the similar year or worse. You want to have a better year. That means you got to change. Professional traders have specialized strategies, systems, and reasons for taking trades. And it's about the daily focus for me. But once you learn how to find momentum, making money really isn't hard. It's determining where you want to get out. You want to hold it. You want to do the ad like we did in the meta. You want to get out quick. Do you want to get out of half? Do you want to do an option? Do you want to do a day trade? Those are decisions you can make. How, how much size you want to take in something. But actually getting up and actually becoming profitable is not hard once you qualify it and know what to do. And then when you take a loss, it's not the end of the world. Again, in the stats I show at the beginning, you'll see the losses in there. But we don't have as many losers as winners. We have way more winners. You won't get upset if you lose money in a trade on one day, knowing that tomorrow you're going to make money in probably the next five days. So that's where the confidence and the conviction in what you do really takes hold. 
And that's where you get out of that whole gambling mentality, which so many people are in because they've been losing, losing for so long, not just 2023, but prior years that they start getting into that gambling mentality. And, and ironically, and again, I know this from teaching people, ironically, the people that are the most tend to go with the gambling mentality are people that are trading for a long time for some reason and don't know the right stuff and don't have a lot of money, you know. So they really can't afford to be doing the gambling, although no one should be doing it. Even if you had a million dollars cash in a trading account at a broker, you shouldn't be gambling. You want to use that money very wisely to turn one million into five, okay? So you've got to focus on one strategy to be effective and not only effective, efficient. So every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably like the Walmart, big moves on the day, okay, that's what I want, early confirmation of my bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 because I want to do the day trade and the option and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which to me is one to one. I'll take 50% though in an option. I'm okay with that too, especially over the holidays. Hanukkah is starting soon. Then we got Christmas. It's December. It's New Year's. You got to be careful trading. You got to be careful trading right now. You got to be patient and like strike you know, um, I live along Central Park. Actually, as I'm talking to you here, I just saw the hawk. I haven't, I hadn't seen him in weeks, and I just saw him as I'm sitting here this afternoon. So it's a great sign because I was wondering if he, if he migrated in the winter because the weather's changed. But anyways, when the hawk goes after his prey, he dive bombs down and gets it to go for the kill. And that's really how you have to be when you trade. And it doesn't matter if you're trading options, and it doesn't matter if you're day trading, and it doesn't matter if you're taking a thousand dollar risk per trade or 10. It's the whole idea that you have to go after it like that and you have to grab the money and get out. Again, this is active income where you're chunking it out. We're not buying and holding forever, okay? And swing trading right now is killing people with this market in the range. And it really is all year because even if you bought early in January and say, fine, you bought in January, got out, the end of January, beginning of February, fine. But I mean, I showed you how the market fell in September and how the market fell in October. And the last six months has been killing people in reference to swing trading. So options are better to do the overnight moves because you do have that fix, fixed risk, but you still have to pick and choose what you're doing. So to analyze a large time frame is what I'm looking for when I rate the gap. I get up in the morning, I rate the gap based on the daily, and then I make a decision. What do I think the directional bias is for this gap? Will it go move up? Will it follow through lower, okay? Then I take the trade on the one minute chart, but you know I'm always looking at the daily, and then I enter it on the one, and that's how I'm getting the high degree of focus and accuracy once the market opens. And then I'm using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick, which allows me the accuracy and the direction, but then the one minute where I can hone it down to get the risk to reward in my trades. So if you decide you want to come and learn from me and take my class, again, the last class for the year, December 16th and 17th, you will learn my 26-point checklist, the rating system, how I make the picks. And again, this is something that you can use on your own. I don't hold anything back. I teach the entries and the exits in the class as well. So the 26-point golden gap rating system helps you pick which stock to trade each day. It pinpoints ahead of time which stock will have the move in the day with volatility you trade. You prep in the morning before the open. Have it ready. Go through and rate it before 9.30. And then I know what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. And then I have a couple picks, hopefully, more than one or maybe one. Having a checklist keeps you organized and focused, and that is a professional way to do it. That moves you away from the gambling mentality. And having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at on a chart in a stock to make the correct direction. Having a checklist helps assist you with directional bias, which you need, and you got to get the momentum too. And then having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. Again, 2023 is over in less than a month. Have you made your goals for the year? Have you fallen short? Have you exceeded your goals? You want to make more money next year, either way, okay? And how are you going to do it? You need a plan of action, and a checklist is a plan of action. Everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action and a checklist. On a professional level, all high-income career field specialists have checklists. You go in to get surgery, you there's a checklist you got to go through. Things you have to do. Stop eating at this time. Stop drinking water. Do this, okay? Any questions here? A few more minutes. I'm almost done. But gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap in the first place. And the professional gaps, 
that happen play out in stocks by form by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap. You confirm the large money will flow with it, and then by having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation. And then conviction that the large institutional money is on your side, and you play it. Gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency. And again, I prefer to short because that emergency panic, that the sell-off is what you're shorting, okay? And then an action is forced by participants of the stock. Again, whether it moves up or down. And that's why gap trading is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And that's what you want, okay? So don't waste time trading without getting anywhere. So many people are doing this for years and they're back and forth. Either making a little, losing a little, or break even. It just makes no sense. Again, another calendar year is almost done. We're getting into a new year soon. You want to move forward with your life. You want to get to the point where you say, I did it. I know what I'm doing. I'm finally getting somewhere with this. All these years that I've done this, is it counts. It matters, okay? It's having the right knowledge, having the right focus. How are you going to get it? You've got to learn from an expert, from someone like me who's been doing this a long time. And for me, I'm an expert in gaps. I'm an expert in shorting. I'm an expert in momentum because that is my focus. It's what I've been doing for a very long time. And time is just too precious to waste. And the older you get, you realize that. And again, I don't want to trade for six and a half hours all day. My eyes get tired and I have other things to do, other things I want to do with my life. So again, it, it's, it's really perfecting it, putting the time and energy into it to get to the point you're good. And then you can have the lifestyle that you want financially and also the time-wise lifestyle. But you will come and learn the checklist if you decide to take my class. And in the class, you will learn the strategy of the 26 points, teaches you how to play the stock, teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. I think it's very important in today's world to really empower yourself because you never know. I think everyone should learn after COVID. You never know what the future may hold. And you have to be in charge of your own life and your own finances and your own money. So the Golden Gap course is a whole system. It's not just one thing. You will learn the strategy, the method. You can use it for day trades. You can use it for options. And remember, this time of the year when everyone's buying presents for everyone else, you can buy a present for yourself. Education is a gift to yourself. I'm pretty much done Christmas shopping. Uh, I took advantage of all the sales, which were running early this year, even before Black Friday. But I also bought some things for myself because things were on sale. You know, I mean, this is the time of the year. Sometimes we need to be good to ourselves as well as our family and the people that we love. And education is an investment in you and your future and what you're doing. So if you decide to come and take my class, it's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks at our professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. So the last class of the year, like I said, <coughs> is not this weekend, next weekend, December 16th and 17th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I am doing a package for everyone. Speaking of holiday specials, this is going on through Friday. I've been running it. This is a nice package for new people. If you sign up by December 8th for the Golden Gap course combo, the tuition is $74.99. You will get the Golden Gap course and the trends course, and you will get the trading room free to the end of 2024, the newsletter, the options newsletter free to the 2024, and the market report through the end of 2024, and the Gap options course you will get free. That is in February. The trends course is in January, and then the Golden Gap is in December. So this is one price for all of this. This gets you all my trades for the next year to the end of 2024. And again, it's a really, really, really huge package for the price. But I've taught people that have never traded, like I said. I've taught people that have been trading forever. Here's some testimonials. Any questions from anyone? Someone saying good luck? Good luck to you as well. Any questions from anyone? If you do have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you would like a trial for Thursday or Friday, you can email me as well. If I don't see any of you, have a wonderful, wonderful, healthy, happy holiday season and happy new year. Okay, Melissa, thank you very much.